Hey everyone, Bob here again. This time I would like to do a job description writing exercise. And the job that I'm gonna write is the job of human resource manager, HR manager. So uh, as you can see, I have already read, written the human resource manager job title, job number, job goal, and the location which is NCR and the division which is strategic business unit or SBU food and beverage manufacturing. And this job, human resource manager is reporting directly to the COO or chief operating officer of the strategic business unit, SBU. The functional manager's designation would be general manager or GM for corporate HR, HRM, human resource management. And the immediate subordinates are training manager, personal manager, recruitment manager, health and safety manager, company doctor. If the company is providing a clinic, medical clinic, then they're also providing company doctor position and secretary. Uh, date of effect would be January 15, 2022. Revision number is 00 because this is the first time that we're gonna write this uh, job description. The thing that is left blank here are core purpose of job. We're gonna write it later. In the area of responsibility, you can we can call it AOR for short, and success indicators. Everything else already written uh, earlier, uh, like activities, but I'm gonna explain it to you later also. also. And the job dimensions, job context, key relationship, uh, person specification, which is uh, having the qualification and experience. And the last part of the job description is the competencies. All of this will be explained to you later. But first, I'm going to write the, the one that I have left blank uh, so that I'll be able to explain it to you more vividly. Okay. So this uh, actually this uh, exercise is more focused on the three areas of this job description the core purpose of job the areas of area of responsibility aor or and the success indicators because we want to save uh, more time uh, we don't want to spend a lot of time on writing all everything else on the job description so let's start with the core purpose of job so I have already uh, the idea in my mind. So let's start with to drive. To drive the HR team, right? The HR team. When you, actually when you're doing uh, this uh, job description exercise uh, more often then you'll become uh, more familiar with with the way the uh, job description is being written, right? Especially if you uh, if you know the job well, okay. Just like myself, I know the job well, so that's why I have uh, I have ideas on what the job description would look like, okay? So to drive the HR team managers, so this position uh, is having. Uh, team uh, is having managers in his team. So this, uh, all he has to do is to drive this team to work for him, do all the work for him. Like the, you know, the HR managers responsibility includes um, staffing or recruitment and, and, and training and development of the employees and uh, compensation and among other things, right? So uh, I just uh, continue writing this core purpose of job and I'll explain to you everything later, okay? So team of uh, managers. So recruitment manager, uh, learning and development manager, you know, a, and, and all the other managers. So, to drive the HR, HRM team of manage, managers, I will put this as plural, okay? To ensure the attraction, to ensure
to ensure the interaction means the you are trying to attract potential candidate from the labor market when you are doing recruitment so you are trying to get uh, talented people to join your organization this is what the recruitment manager is doing so uh, training and development right training development training is actually different from the from the uh, the training is different from the development development is training is done uh, you know one time uh, if you have a weakness in terms of this in terms of skill gaps of the employee you're trying to do a training needs assessment uh, identify the training requirement of the employee and as soon as you identify it then you deliver the training one time it could be done in the classroom or it could be done uh, outside of the classroom meaning on the job training so so it could be one day or two days but the development is done over time a long period of time right so you, there will be a series of on the job training and there will be a series of assessment competency practical competency assessment right so part of the responsibility or the core purpose of job is the development and performance performance of employee and then also a very important thing is to retain all the people so retention and rewarding rewarding means you know uh, giving you know trying to provide the compensation package to all employees uh, hr manager reviews the compensation the the policy and try to update the the compensation and then give them to the employees okay that's that's what you you mean when you say rewarding of employees okay all right in this view because i was i was talking about the the company having uh having sbus strategic business unit right so most of the companies uh you know uh, diversified companies multinational companies they have various you know they have group of companies they have let's, let's say for example the company is, a, is an fmcg fast moving consumer goods or you know um, food and beverage company so one is bio is uh, manufacturing uh, food other is bio is manufacturing beverage uh, one is bio is um, manufacturing uh, cheese products one is you in is into uh, what you call poultry business okay other is be uh, other is bio is into uh, dairy production business okay that's why one of these is bios are, is called strategic business unit or is bio okay that's what we mean when we say is bio so with the requisite skills okay the requisite skills uh, knowledge okay what else expertise expertise what else uh, and experience you need experience also experience you you need to put a, a time frame in in the recruitment in the training development and and uh, performance retention okay in in a timely
timely what timely and cost effective okay see i have included the time frame and also the cost uh, you need to monitor and try to control the cost at the same time okay so let's say cost uh, effective manner okay effective manner okay see uh you you your the first part of the sentence or the core purpose of job is always start with two and then the second part would be uh, buy right uh, buy okay to drive the hrm team of managers and the, how are you going to do that by devising this is what i learned when i have attended the uh, hey method uh, job evaluation including the job description and job analysis okay this is what they told me you have to start by two and then you all the second part would be by by something you no know, how, how are you going to do that how are you going to do it by devising uh, and implementing okay you have to device uh, you have to i mean design you know? It's the same meaning and implementing. Sorry, I have duplicated the end and implementing. Implementing whatever you have devised, whatever you have designed, then you implement, right? Uh, implementing progressive. Does it mean that I can be a human resource manager because I can write the the description of a job description of the human resource manager? Well, the the you have to have you know all the qualifications, all the experience, all the exposure for you to be a human resource manager because it's human resource manager is a very challenging job. A very complex uh, kind of job. He's a leader of a of a business. He's a leader of an organization. He takes the lead, and he has so much in him in terms of knowledge and experience. Okay, so it's it's not that easy to to you know to uh, assume a a human resource manager position. Okay. I'm not saying that I'm not qualified, <laughs> but uh, what I'm saying is this is a very challenging job and it takes a person, really a what you call seasoned professional to be a, a human resource manager. Maybe I'm not qualified, okay? I'm just being honest to myself. So, okay, HR, but I can, I can write his uh, job description, okay? The job description of the HR manager strategies nowadays no before in the old days they call chart manager as just plain personal manager is taking care of the pers employee uh, administration you know uh, managing the you know the salaries and and all requirements you know all the remuneration to employees okay all uh administrative in nature but the human resource manager which we call nowadays is really the the biggest percentage of his uh, responsibility is really about strategic planning human resource is about strategic planning especially if the if the organization is so huge it's so large organization that really it takes uh, somebody a human resource manager to be is strategist okay should be strategist he's always doing strategic planning so he should have a a what you call strategic planning skills right so strategies in conjunction i would say conjunction
in conjunction with who? With because this this position belongs to the SBU strategic business unit, and there would be if you have a, a group of companies, there will be a corporate, and they would be a general manager for HR in the corporate, and the HR manager should be guided by the corporate. HR team or HR uh, authorities or the GM in the corporate, okay? So in, in conjunction with corporate, right? Corporate HR team. Okay. There would be HR team in the corporate uh, like there would be a GM or sometimes they have what you call head of HR in the corporate. Organizational development manager, uh, company policy compliance manager, all those uh, team in the corporate are doing, are doing their job to support all the group of companies, the what you call SBUs, okay? And by uh, the effective effective, so you have to be effective in whatever you do no? as a human resource manager. Execution, you have to execute everything. Execute the policies, execute the procedures, okay, coming from the corporate center execution of the approved approved uh, HR policies, okay? Uh, the one uh, drawing the HR policies or formulation of policies is the company uh, policy compliance manager. He's the one uh, doing the uh, formulation, and this will be approved by all the stakeholders, all the HR managers. Okay, they will uh, the upon upon doing the draft of the of a specific policy, the the compliance manager will distribute this to all the HR team, and the HR team will also uh, revert by giving their feedbacks. Okay. Then, uh, in the end, uh, the GM, general manager, uh, HR will approve. Uh, then the final approval will be the CEO, okay? For implementation, right? So HR policies uh, will include procedures also. Procedures and everything else. Uh, and best practices of HR. Okay. Anyway, the best practice, whatever best best practice that they're gonna they're gonna implement, would be concurred by all. Okay. So this is going to be plural practices. Okay. So this is our core purpose of job of the human resource manager, uh, this position, human resource manager. So. Our statement is like to drive the HRM team of managers to ensure the attraction, training, development, performance, retention, and rewarding. And this is something to do with the compensation and uh, benefits, okay, uh, of employees in the SBU with something wrong here. Let me check. Okay, just the space. With the requisite skills, knowledge, expertise, and experience in a timely and cost-effective manner by devising and implementing progressive HR strategies in conjunction with corporate HR team and by the effective execution of the approved HR policies, procedures, and best practices. I think that will do. Uh, okay, we'll just review it in the meantime. Maybe your, your, uh, when you review it, okay, by yourself, then you find something wrong or something that you want to uh, include or you, you want to reorganize the statement, and it's up to you. 
I'm just giving you the ideas on how to do the core purpose of job of a human resource manager for SBU food and beverage manufacturing companies, okay? Now let's start with the areas of responsibility, AOR, okay? This is easy because everybody knows, no? it's a common knowledge that the, that the job of human resource manager is about recruitment, it's about training and development, you know, it's about performance management, it's about personal administration, it's about compensation and benefits and, you know, all these kind of things. So we'll start with the, the very, very first uh, responsibility, which is recruitment. You know, you try to get people, talents from, from outside or from internal recruitment or from external recruitment. You get it from the labor or try to get it from, from outside of the country, you know, especially when you're talking about the scarcity of the of a certain position or certain expertise, okay? So I will start with, uh, I would call it staffing. Uh, because the, the human resource will do man planning, okay? Ensure that the, the HR will be able to fill out the, um, the head count, you know, as per budget, as per plan. So staffing, so ensure, right? Ensure effective. And timely. Acquisition. No, you're trying to get uh, talents by doing recruitment. Okay, of staff. As per approved. Okay, man plan. Man planning, right? Man plan. Uh, maybe I would say head count. Okay, this is, you know, this is coming from the uh, the budget. It was it was uh, prepared by the HR manager with the help of the the uh, other uh, managers, personnel, recruitment managers, etc. Okay, then once it is in the the budget, then make sure that the recruitment manager uh, who is reporting to the HR manager is our recruiting and hiring recruiting selecting and hiring all this uh, required uh, position in the as per approved uh, organizational structure okay and and organizational structure okay Right, so staffing, ensure effective and timely acquisition of staff as per approved man plan or head down and organizational structure. So organizational structure should be approved first before you, before you can hire uh, or recruit this personnel, okay? So before going to the next AOR, I would like to do let me check this out. Okay. I would like to do the success indicators first, no? So the success indicators would be all positions. Positions are filled. No? This should be filled. You can say filled out timely. We need to, you know, the re recruitment manager should have the, the sense of urgency when recruiting this, especially the managerial position or the, and the critical technical positions, right? As per approved, again, we specify this. We should be clear about this 
you know, approved budget plus headcount. Okay, that would be the success indicators of staffing uh, AOR. Okay, let's go to the next one. And the second one, I'd like to put a space. Oh, sorry. Uh, that one. Okay. Training. Not training. Uh, training. Training. Okay, I, again, I would like to put some space here. So, training and development. Okay, training and development, uh, oversee, oversee training programs. Whatever training programs that the uh, training manager has developed, he has to review and he has to approve, okay, before, uh, uh, before the implementation of the such pro programs so, and also the budget, okay. What happened is when, uh, when the training manager uh, tried to get, um, you know, external, external uh, training provider from outside, from, uh, from Europe, from the US, from UK, for example, yeah, or from within the country, but external, you know, training provider. Um, the usually the HR manager has to approve, okay, the the uh, payment. You know, maybe the the training manager will uh, will ask the purchasing department to prepare a PO purchase order, and. Before it goes to the, um, the the procurement department, it goes through the human resource manager first uh, approval, sign off before it can be the PO can be prepared. Okay, although it is already in the budget approved, but sometimes depending on the the policy, sometimes the training manager already has the the final approval of the of the payment of the whatever external training that they're going to get to train the people. You know, sometimes you get you go for training with people from external source. Like, for example, uh, you're talking about uh, a trainer from uh, uh, a certain um, machinery, okay? You need external expertise. You need uh, a guy from the the manufacturer of that uh, machine to deliver the training to transfer for the transfer of technology to our own technicians or, or engineers. So there will be a, a payment involved in the, in, the, in the acquisition of those external trainer. So the training manager has the final sign off uh, as per policy. If the policy is the it has to go through the HR manager, then okay. Sometimes it does not. The final uh, say is the training manager. Most of the large organization are like that. Uh, they are already the the uh, authorities are already delegated, entrusted to the training manager because the HR manager cannot do all these things. No? All these little things. You could say these are all little things because you're talking about large corporation or large uh, organization. Okay. Okay. I would like to add on this one ensure implementation. Of training. Okay. Of course because this is the responsibility. Training is equally important, critical uh, in organization. This should, the training aspect should not be neglected by some organization. If you have, especially if you have large organization like 1,000, 5,000, 10,000, 15, 
and there are organizations who are having 30,000 employees. Okay? So, that's why what they're doing is they are doing decentralization already. You know, you know, you have, you divide it into divisions like, uh, let's say if you have farming division, you put farming division and you put training manager and HR manager in that division. Okay, if you have a sales division, then they have their own training manager and HR manager. And then you have the operations division, which, which the manufacturing belongs to. Then they also have their own HR manager and training manager. So even the marketing, they have their own training manager and HR manager, okay? Marketing, uh, sales division, or some large organization, they, this, these uh, functions are separated, okay? Because of the, you know, the, the, because of the large organization, we have so many, you know, the, the manpower complement is so huge, so many, like 30,000 employees, for example, then you need to, you need to uh, decentralize all the authorities in terms of the approval of the training, in terms of the HR practices, etc. Okay, training needs, assessment, DNA is very important, critical in the training and development. Okay, this is this is what this is where you do the identification of training, right? The assessment uh, analysis of the training. Okay, this is in collaboration with the line managers. Okay, it's not only the training managers doing it, but this is also they are. The training manager and the line managers are cooperating with each other. Okay. Development. Uh, slash continuous. Uh, improvement. Of syllabus. You can also say curriculum, but I prepare the word syllabus and timely, or you can say modules, right? Pro improvement of modules, training modules, and timely uh, execution. Execution of what? Execution of training calendar, okay? So that's it. Uh, second, AOR. Okay, I would like to do the uh, success indicator right away. Okay, that would be number two. Why is it number two? Two is not coming. Okay, that's it. So number two is training needs. Training needs assessment. Actually, you can so you can say T in A already universal uh, word okay acronym everybody understood already are completed okay tna are completed for all employees for all employees i think that would be period so all required courses, all required courses, training courses are included. In the calendar, of course. There are some internal uh, training, some SME subject matter expert are doing or coach, coaches are doing it internally, uh, on the job training OGT. Okay. But there are also some external training that you have to uh, seek. 
very important for the transfer of technology, right? Release. Release of stuff. Okay, this is one uh, critical issue. Releasing of stuff for training. Sometimes this is difficult because line managers are not releasing their uh, employees for training. So if you have a hundred percent release of uh, employees, then for training, then you you wouldn't have problem in this one. For train. Uh, for training, no, of staff for training. Of training as per training schedule. S schedule. You know, you know the British, they call it, they pronounce it as, as schedule, schedule. But the Filipinos, they pronounce it as schedule, okay? schedule the british schedule okay let's go to the next um aor uh, okay we have done the staffing we have done the training and development then the next thing we're going to do is the performance management okay performance management This is would be the title of our AOR, right? Then we will uh, uh, make a statement for this. That's why I'm putting a colon. Okay, identify, identify key objectives, key objectives. Very important that you identify the objectives of the performance management, okay? Ah, what else? Implement, implement. Okay, what is there to implement? Uh, performance appraisal, we have to implement the performance appraisal. Okay, uh, appraisal. Most of the time, it is the uh, it is the training manager who is uh, formulating the uh, format for the performance appraisal most of the time. But uh, sometimes the personal manager is also doing that. But most of the time it's the learning and development because when it comes to you know employee evaluation, uh, training needs, finding the strengths, finding the weaknesses, the learning and development manager is most uh, qualified to do it, is most knowledgeable in doing such uh, uh, designing of performance appraisal format, okay? So implement performance appraisal. What else? Provide training. Provide training. Uh, or training and coaching, no? Coaching. Very important for coaches to do it, uh, addressing the weaknesses of uh, employees to address, right? To address. To address uh, weaknesses. That's the idea of... Uh, having an appraisal, you know, uh, for you to be able to, you know, identify the weaknesses. Sometimes the SWOT analysis, WOT, can also do it. Strength, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. But when it comes to weaknesses in terms of, the, you know, in terms of the skill gaps, of the, the lacking of the skills of the employees, the performance appraisal would be the best thing to to uh, carry out. So weaknesses uh, and other uh, and other solutions. Sometimes, uh, sometimes training is not the solution. 
Okay, maybe a coaching or something else. Okay. So, for improvement, right? You know, sometimes uh, the line managers are always insisting why they are having poor performance in, in their manufacturing uh, responsibilities because of the lack of training, you know, the lack of training. But actually, it's not the lack of training. Sometimes uh, there are other uh, uh, there are other issues and there are other solutions. Not always the training is the solution, okay? Okay, I, I can stop here and then give and receive. Feedback. This is actually two way, right? It's two way. Feedback. Feedback from the manager to the subordinate and feedback of the subordinate back to the manager. Okay. Two way it should be there should be two way feedback. Okay. Or feedback from the coach and okay, and feedback from the uh, mentee. Okay, when you're talking about mentoring, okay, uh, there should be uh, okay, that. That is also another solution, uh, mentoring. So you're not talking about the training and development. You're talking about mentoring, coaching, and other solutions. Okay. So after that, you have to formulate. Uh, you have to formulate action plan. So always. Action plan will come next after uh, the result of the uh, uh, performance appraisal. Okay. Action plan. Very important so that you know how where you're going, what are the things that you're going to do to for, for continuous improvement. Give reward. Okay. Give reward. What reward? Example, uh, promotion, right? Or um, salary increment. Those are uh, kind of rewards, uh, which is part of the uh, compensation, right? That's a monetary, monetary compensation. Uh, recognition for doing a, a good job, right? Of recognition of good performance, right? Okay, so let's follow that with the success indicators. So success indicators improve. Improve employee performance. Group employee performance appraisal. Appraisal. Some some uh, HR are, is calling this uh, employee performance evaluation. So, uh, most of the time, it is called employee performance appraisal. Okay, most appropriate one. Format slash system. Okay. All weaknesses. So this is uh, this is the idea, okay. Uh, identifying weaknesses, no, are identified. Identified. Okay, and addressed. Okay, without the resolution, your uh, performance appraisal is nothing. You have to address it. You have to find a resolution to address. And not all the time that training is the solution. Unaddressed. Okay. Uh, period. Feedback. Received. 
the drug receive. Okay, you can put period here. In place. Okay, in place and progression. Progression of action plan. Okay. So improve employee performance appraisal format slash system. All weaknesses are identified and addressed. Feedback received in place and progression of action plan. Okay. So, okay, we, we, I'm going to do the next one for the AOR. Okay, next one for AOR. So what is AOR number four? I have already, we've already done the staffing, training and development, performance management. What would, what would, what would be next? Uh, I would say compensation, okay? Equally important, uh, as maybe more important, compensation, because this is the reward portion of the HR management. So compensation management, management okay colon so what would be the statement here manage the employee remuneration all all in terms of remuneration to the employee to ensure Equitable, no? Equitable and consistent. And consistent application of company. Compensation. That's why it's very important for the job sizing, job evaluation, right? Do some roles, uh, uh, role thumbing, uh, job evaluation, job sizing, uh, base pay structuring, you know, very important to have an equitable uh, compensation package company compensation and benefits of course you know very important that the company grows when the company grows there will be added benefits okay when the company is not making money uh, there will be no benefits okay so you have to think about that right so you have to help you have to support the organizational uh, goal, which is, of course, the bottom line, uh, making money, okay? And benefits, policies, and procedures, right? Procedures implemented. Across SBUs, no? Ah, wrong spelling. Remember uh, SBUs? SBUs is strategic business unit. One, one business unit, okay, of the corporation. Make it plural, okay? This is like a group of companies, right? So we're gonna we're gonna do the uh, right away. Okay, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a space now. Right, space. Too much space. And then right. So number four is review. 
you can say review. Amendment or changes, right? Amendment of policy. Uh, okay, so you're talking about uh, compensation. So the policy has to be reviewed regularly, amended regularly as necessary. What is the what is the objective of the company to be ahead or to lead the the market in terms of compensation or to meet the market or to lag the market? Which one you would do? You would like to have. Of course, you don't want to lag the market. You want either you want uh, to lead the market to be ahead of the market or to just meet the market okay in terms of your compensation okay so therefore you have to do a, a regular review of the com the compensation uh, policy because you want to you don't want to to, be, to lag behind other competitors especially in the food business very stiff competitor competition and there are so many companies doing uh, this kind of business right now Okay, because this is the most sellable, no? basic commodities. These are most sellable uh, commodity in the market. People, whether they like it or not, they have to eat, they have to drink, uh, you know, uh, beverages, uh, food, evaluation. Okay, or you can say job sizing. Job sizing. Part of the uh you know rule timing rule timing of the uh, jobs right so that they always receive equitable uh, compensation are conducted okay regularly Actually, the procedure of the job evaluation is done to all the job families once a year, uh, review of the job evaluation. Do we, they're doing job evaluation to all the job families every year, annual uh, job evaluation. Because, you know, what's the reason? You want to be, just like what I said, you want to be ahead or you want to lead the the labor market compensation uh, or you want to meet whether you want to meet or you want to to uh, to be ahead and you cannot do that without any review so you have to do review and and the review of the compensation is in is included in the policy that is the one of the policy statement reviewing the uh, the compensation annually okay you have to think also of the of the economy. Now you're you're basing it on economy yeah. in terms of the, what is the economy uh, right now. Uh, the 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 base pay is also increasing. There there are there is increment in the uh, the basic salary pay. So so you have to you know update in terms of your. Uh, job size okay so that would be regularly all right so we're just finished with the aor4 then the next one would be uh in terms of policy policy formulation formulation and ampersand implementation okay colon what would be our statement in the policy formulation okay so 
HR manager and training manager are part of this policy formulation. So member of the committee or the uh, executive or the management committee, man mancom management committee. Okay. So in coordination. In coordination uh, with the corporate policy. Okay. Coordination, I think it's right, with the corporates. Okay, coordination with the corporates policy. Actually, I can make it. Uh, Capital, capitalize, policy compliance. Compliance manager. As I told you before, there's a policy compliance manager uh, based in the corporate, okay? To look after the formulation of the policies, you know, review of the policies, things like that. Ensure formulation formulation policies are applied was failing again are applied Unfit for SBUs. So you know the the SBU HR manager should always situate that you know the policies are really fit to the SBU. Okay. And that they're being strictly complied with. Okay. So policy formulation and implementation in coordination with the corporate uh, corporates policy compliance manager ensure formulation policies are applied and fit for its be used and that they're being strictly complied with. So let's follow, follow it up with the uh, success indicators right away. Okay, so what would be, okay, we make it simple. Up to date and and compliance. Huh? The idea is to make it up to date and compliance of policy, and everybody comply with the policy. All the HR managers and their uh, uh, managers team. Okay, with you are what is this? It should be reviews are subsetting reviews are conducted regularly. That's correct. Okay. Thank you for uh, correcting me. <laughs> the the computer has corrected me. Right, correct. Up to date and compliance of policy. Hey, that would be enough. Okay. So let's let's go right away. Uh, let's go with the next one. Uh, what's next? Okay, already done the staffing, training and development, performance management, that's very important. Compensation also equally important. Uh, equitable compensation, policy formulation, that's policy. Because the policy of the company comes from the HRM, human resource management, okay? So very important that we do that. Okay, let's go to the number six. 
Okay, we'll say personnel. This one also important. This is now the personal administration. This is where you, you know, where you do the the one that uh, that is distributing the salary, you know, depositing depositing your salary in the banks every 15th or 38th of the month, you know, these guys are doing that. Mm. And doing the timekeeping, you know, the time cards, attendance cards, you know, the deduction, management of deductions, uh, SSS, taxes, withholding tax, and uh, health cards, uh, premium, and, and everything else, okay? Personal administration, right? Insure services are, so usually they have what you call SLA, service level agreement with the customers and the customers are internal internal customers all the employees are their customers okay so the employees are expecting for these guys to give good service to all employees are provided to all employees of course these are all their customers that's why the customers have the right to make complaints uh, whenever there are lapses in services, right? Employees without fail. So it should be good in terms of SLA, such as, such as what provision of contracts. Contracts, right? Contracts, management, management of all deductions, true? Deductions, okay, from the salaries no, of employee and salary and benefits so when when a manager or other employee don't receive their uh, benefits then they go to straight away to the personal office and complain about it why why my benefits are not released to me this month what's wrong mm. why there was lapses in this service so you have the right to complain distribution Provision of loans, no? Employee make loans, calamity loans, and any other loans, SS loans, GSIS loans. We can say an other employee, what? Remuneration. Okay? So that would be under the personal administration. So straight away, we can do the success indicators for that. Uh, this is simple, just achievement. Achievement. Of service level. Agreement. Okay, then let's go to the next one. Uh, that would be, uh, we've done with the compensation, policy, personal administration, performance management. Uh, what else there is to it? Okay, uh, let's see. Budget, okay, personnel, very important. Personal budget. Uh, control, budget control. Okay, then colon. 
what you want to say about the budget okay uh say you'll be talking about the planning right planning you'll be talking about disbursement you're talking about money so disbursement so what else you want to talk about this uh, and cost control as per approved okay as per approved what budget of course mm. and in line with Okay, with what? Finance. Finance policy. And best practice practices. Okay, then we'll do right away the number seven success indicators, right? So what would be number seven disbursements? Disbursement, I'll make it plural. Yeah. Within, within the approved budget, of course, the approved. budget just period then cost control uh, procedures let me say are in place okay we got it just make it simple and understandable okay okay what are the other um other uh aor we already made the seven i'd like to make it eight or nine yeah there are others uh like um others uh, human relations human relations Okay, what's in the human relations? Management. And continuous improvement. Got improvement of human relations. Human relations. Let me think. How are we going to do it? By seeing. Mm. Seeing to it. That. Communications. Among among your peers or among yeah, among peers. Peers. Among peers and subordinates. Coordinates are improved. If there are good communication, then there will be no issues in terms of behavioral issues, in terms of uh, conflict in the in the workplace environment. Okay, in the work environment rather. So improved. Uh, I said it right there. Conflicts. 
wrong spelling. Conflicts uh, in the workplace. Very important that you manage the conflict in the workplace. Are managed. Okay. Grievances, especially unionized uh, organization, right? Grievances are addressed. Are addressed and human behavior, especially the multicultural, multinational, uh, multiracial uh, environment. You need to address all this, these conflicts, this stress management, uh, you and human behavior. You know, the British, they always spell behavior with you, V I O U R, right? But the, of course, uh, we always follow the American <laughs> way of doing spelling for uh, for some words behavioral issues okay are monitored and managed in the work environment environ Man, I think that would be okay. Okay, that would be all right. Human relations management and continuous improvement of human relations by seeing to it that communications very important in the interpersonal uh, communications is very important in organization. Uh, sound communication will bring harmony to the workplace, and all the smart objectives are achieved. The goal, the common goal of the organization is achieved, and the company is making money. Simple as that. So among peers and subordinates are improved. Conflicts in the workplace are managed, grievances are addressed, and human behavioral issues are monitored and managed in the work environment. Okay, very nice. I think I like how I, how I uh, sentence this. Uh, AOR. I like it. I like it very much, right? So let's do the. Uh, why there is no line here? Okay, it doesn't matter. No problem. No line, no problem. What's important is the content of the job description, not. You can do the quality check later on, right? So important is you write whatever you have in your mind you transfer it to the document, okay? Uh, so how are you going to do the success indicator of the human relations? You can start by the conflicts. Okay, conflicts and stresses. Uh, there are so many stressor, and one of them is the manager and supervisor. They are stressors to the to the rank and files, especially the lack of uh, leadership and influencing skills, communication skills, interpersonal skills. The lack of those will make it worse for the employees, okay? So stresses are adequate. Okay, adequately. Adequately, and I can include sufficiently, and sufficiently. That's why very important that your managers and supervisors should undergo leadership skills training. Okay, in terms of behavioral leaderships, in terms of situational leadership, influence people, how to win friends. How to win win people as per Carnegie, okay? So sufficiently managed should be past past tense managed. 
Okay. Sound communication is very important also. Sound communications. Sound communications. Sound communications across is bio. Okay. Okay. You got it. I get. I think I'll make one more. One more. Uh, as as uh, he said, always go for a maximum. Maximum should be the nine AUR. You should not go more than nine. I think they. I think they are right about this. Uh, so I would include talent management. Okay. So talent management is okay to add in your e AOR because this position is very critical in the organization. Okay. Uh, the HR manager very critical in the organization, right? So it should be it should he should have more AOR. Okay, so ensure. We're almost done. That employees are what provided with competencies, right? With the knowledge and skill sets or uses competencies okay required for the rules and responsibilities is that right i think so Okay, responsible period. Selects the employee. You know the the potential one. Oh, the potential employee. Oh, you can say who has potential for development. No, potential uh, employee for development. No, who has potential. Okay, for career. For career uh, development. You know, very important for the organization to, you know, identify all the potential people, potential employees, and provide them with the career development, you know. This is one of the idea, the solutions for uh, lowering down the uh, employee turnover issues okay people are uh, leaving the company because they have nothing to look forward to no no career development no career path no no promotions no nothing so so you want to motivate them by including them in the promotions okay as long as they of course still it would be performance based uh, promotion performance based uh, career development if they are showing their potential they're showing their eagerness uh, willingness to do the job uh, those are the most important thing for, for them to be included in the in the career development or why is the comma is here right development uh, it's a succession planning, uh, especially for large organization. You need succession planning because you don't know where you're going. Somebody, pipe managers retire this year, and who's gonna replace them? Um, you are not prepared for it. You don't have uh, potential candidates in the pool. Okay. What you do is you do the development of these guys so that uh, when it when the time comes that this 
managers, that's, or especially the older ones, when they resign or they resi retire, you already have somebody to you know, re the employee has the readiness level in terms of motivation and skills, abilities, and they can do the job right away. And only just a few training programs that you provide, and everything else will be okay. Promotions. That's it. Okay. That would be our number nine. See, see the job of the human resource? Very, very highly complex job. Very challenging job. That's why it's also a very high-paying job. Especially in some large organization, they receive a really, uh, really high income, high salary. And this, this job is higher than the other managers, no? like the engineering manager, transport manager, uh, planning managers. Uh, you know, Human resource managers are really high in terms of their uh, uh, job size, in terms of their complexity, in terms of the job dimension, in terms of the accountability, the, the thinking challenge, the freedom to think, you know, the the uh, technical know-how, management breadth, you know, those are the, the basis of your job size. So really, uh, HR manager is really having a really big, bigger job size compared to other middle managers, okay? And this is not middle managers, this is a, a senior managers, senior manager, okay? So what would be our, uh, Okay, our success indicator. Skill sets are provided yeah, of talents are given to them. Uh, they are being prepared, right? For, uh, for the future, yeah? You're talking about vision. So the, the OD, Organizational Development Manager, the TM, talent manager, they, of course, these are managers, they have visions and they want to uh, prepare these guys for the future, okay? Prepare the employees, especially the ones who are potential, who has potential, so prepare them for the future. Uh, they are future managers, future executives provided. You know, nothing is forever for some, uh, season managers they will sooner or later they will retire and they need replacement and the replacement should be uh, more than uh, good enough to 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 provide the vacuum that is has been left behind by the retiring managers or the older managers are provided what provided through Training. See, some some organization are neglecting the training uh, provision to employees. Uh, they always think it as a you know, especially this the small organization. They think as only added cost, but this is your investment for the future for the employees for your future leaders for future managers. Okay. Development. These are future leaders of the organization. This will sustain the business. Okay. For sustainability of the business, you need future leaders, future uh, managers. Career development, right? Career, no, no, not career. Why did the training development through development and coaching and coaching? Career development now. Career development and succession. Planning update. I think that's it.
I think we have covered everything here. Na? As far as core purpose of job, as far as um, what you call uh, AOR and success indicators, we have done everything now. Okay, let's review. To drive the HRM team of managers to ensure the attraction, training, development, performance, retention, and rewarding of employees in the SBU with the requisite skills, knowledge, expertise, and experience in a timely and cost-effective manner by devising and implementing progressive HR strategies in conjunction with corporate HR, HR team, and by the effective execution of the approved uh, HR policies, procedures, and best practices. And our area of responsibility are staffing, uh, ensure effective and timely acquisition of staff, as per approved man plan, headcount, and organizational structure. Training and development, oversee training programs and budget, ensure implementation of training needs assessment, development, continuous improvement of syllabus, or you would say training uh, modules and timely execution of training calendar. Performance management, identify key objectives, implement performance appraisal, provide training coaching to address weaknesses and other solutions for improvement, give and receive feedback, formulate action plan, give reward and recognition for good performance. Compensation management, manage the employee remuneration to ensure equitable and consistent application of company compensation and benefits policies and procedures implemented across the SBUs. Number five, policy formulation and implementation in coordination with the corporate's policy compliance manager. Ensure formulation policies are applied and fit for SBUs and that they are being strictly complied with. Personal administration ensure services are provided to all employees without such as without such as employees without such as what is this employees uh, let me think about this without do you think that this is without fail correct that's why it's good to review when you're doing some documentation right whether you're doing SOP or doing job, job uh, description, writing, or whatever docu documentation that you're doing, you have to review. Double check is always a good practice. To all employees without fail, such as provision of contract, management of deductions, salary and benefits distribution, provision of loans, and other employee remuneration. Number seven is personal budget control, planning, disbursement, and cost control as per approved budget and in line with finance policy and pra practices. Human relations management and continuous improvement of human relations by seeing to it that communications among peers and subordinates are improved, conflicts in the workplace are managed, grievances are addressed, and human behavioral issues are monitored and managed in the work environment. And the last one of our AOR is talent management. Ensure that employees are provided with the knowledge and skill sets required for the roles and responsibility. Selects the employees who has potential for career development, succession planning, promotions. As for the activities, I have already written it uh, previously, earlier today. So I just write all the activities here of the human resource managers and mostly uh, delegated to his uh, middle managers, right? So I'm not going to, write, uh, to read all of that. Uh, it's easy to do anyway, the activities. Very, very generic. Okay, and the job dimension responsible for providing HR services to over 5,000 employees at three business locations, for example. This is just sample, like department budget, because job dimension has something to do with volume, sandal for manufacturing or production, revenue and budget size, any department, subordinates, uh, number of supplier, number of subordinates, number of customers served, variety of functional areas under. So these are the things that they're going to write there. In job context is about the working hours, location, stress, physical condition, resources available. So I have written here 40 hours of work, uh, work a week, 
no 40 hours a week work um usually five days only for the hr manager uh, they're not required to work six hours unlike the guys in the front line like in production engineering maintenance they really have to work six hours a week uh, six days a week rather so location head office of the, of the sbu for example system manager the role reports to sbu and to the corporate so the position uh, attend meetings uh, uh, performance review meetings in the corporate attends meeting in the sbu attends meet so so many so huge responsibility and this is a very stressful uh, responsibility so you have to indicate that in the uh, job de uh, description company car provision plus fuel and uh, repair and maintenance so when the company is providing car that should include fuel and repair and maintenance that also should be indicated on the job description for for the candidate to understand that this is what he is receiving this is also part of the compensation package right company desktop mobile phone and other gadgets travel to three location of sbs corporate center you know to attend business meeting at least twice a week so this is uh most of the HR managers are attending meetings, um, sometimes three times or even four times a week. That's how hectic this uh, position is, you know, when, when it comes to large corporations. Okay, key relationship, uh, this is uh, the internal, superior peer, you know, subordinates, etc. As for the qualification, you can write bachelor's degree in human resources or business management, just really like this. But you cannot deny that there are also human resource managers, you know, engineering background who became uh, human resource managers, you know, depending on the exposure of the individual. Sometimes if they are more exposed in the HRM, they become HRM, right? Even if they are uh, a technical guys coming from engineering, transport, you know, manufacturing. Sometimes they become human resources, but most of the time, uh, as much as possible, when you're recruiting a person for this position, okay, should be in human resources or human uh, business management or master degree in human resources management. But other organization they prepare master's degree as essential right away. Okay, they prepare master's degree right away. But as per the Hay method job evaluation, a requirement for HR manager is just bachelor's. Bachelor's is okay. I think it's overkill when you put master's degree. Anyway, my bachelor's degree, four, four years, three, five years education, that's more than enough, especially in business management, more than enough to, to occupy such, uh, such a difficult position like HRM. So uh, minimum of 10 years, it should be minimum. Five years is not acceptable. As far as I am concerned in the Hay method of evaluation, it should be 10 years. Otherwise you will not get the right job size or job score, scoring in the job evaluation. So experience in HRP, human resource planning, staffing, leaning, uh, learning and development and personal administration. And desirable exposure, say if you are a, manufacturing company you it would be desirable to ex exposure to manufacturing or fmcg based organization and human resource development and human capital management od and talent management anyway that would only be a desirable responsibility so no problem in terms of the competencies excellent communication skills and empathic listener strong leadership and influencing skills Unable to continuously motivate multiracial, multidiscipline, technical, and professional team. A solid understanding of the key principles of labor law and other co government regulations. Knowledge of computer systems, especially related to EHR, you know, electronic HR systems or software, you know, personal programs. Knowledge of multicultural workplace environment, conflict management, stress management, and other behavioral issues management. Understanding of job analysis, job evaluation, job sizing, and base pay structuring processes. Knowledge of human capital learning and development, career development, succession planning strategy, and other programs. 
knowledge of organizational development, talent management, knowledge of business risk management, knowledge of strategic human resource planning, man planning, recruitment strategy, formulation of company policies and HRM related standard operating procedures, knowledge of performance management, employee appraisal system, knowledge of the training needs assessment, onboarding process and induction program, critical lateral and analytical thinker, problem solver and decision making skills, strategic planning skill. So if you have all these competencies, knowledge, skills, and attitude, uh, you would be, you know, you would qualify the position of human resource manager. Provided you have a qualification experience like this and be able to solve the problems of this area of responsibility, then no doubt you will become a human resource manager and the most challenging, one of the most challenging uh, role in a large organization. Okay, that's it for now. I hope you're happy and you understand what I am trying to, to indicate here. Uh, uh, I have just written the core purpose of job, AOR and success indicators for your own practice, uh, writing this kind of job description. Maybe next time I'm gonna do another, uh, another jobs. Uh, I have done several already and, and I'm, go I'm gonna do another jobs. Let's say transport manager, for example, um, warehouse manager, you know, all, all, all those kind of uh, roles in the organization, okay? So thank you very much for watching this uh, video. I hope you like it. If you do, please don't forget to subscribe and, and, sh and share or like it. Okay, until next time, uh, thank you very much for watching.